Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again, early this morning, on that same field, trying to make sure that we can smile this morning, excited about the day, and that when bedtime comes around, we can just breathe. Breathe. Exhale. You know, one of the things that stays on my mind is when you think about people, two people got to eat, both of them, and one of them come up with a plan that they can both eat, one of them come up with a plan where they can only one eat. That's a strange plan, but sometimes it works that way. So, <clears throat> let's talk about that. The Supreme Court, I'm taking some notes, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm going to be referring to them, so don't let my referring to my notes distract you. The Supreme Court, corrupt and what? Political, such as everyone else. Every last one of us got our opinion, and it might line up with some other's opinion, or it might not. Our organizations are just like we are. They don't represent any one person. So, <clears throat> bending its back to play its part and solidifying its role in obvious evil. The Supreme Court's role in obvious evil champions America's way. It, the Supreme Court, the highest voice of the land. Well, these justices currently are Republicans and they are just as corrupt as Trump. Watch what they're doing. Observe them. They are as corrupt as the senators that failed to hold him accountable and as corrupt as the representatives who paved the way. Pain and suffering, you think? This, my friends, is in order to make rules and regulations that others must follow, laid down by the crooks that's exploiting the life from the people, taking your life, and then they're blaming you, the people, for the problems that exist, blaming Republicans and Democrats can't get it together. And the conflict is caused by lies and deceptions of those who would be your saviors, the politicians. What they are referred to by me are massive evil and little evil. There is one fair and just way of life. I always want to remind you that there, out of all the things that's going on wrong, there still is a fair and there is a just way of life. It's called God. And I'm not talking about my God this time. I'm talking about your God. Your God assures you got purpose on this earth. Your God during these times, your God looks out for your survival. Your God looks out for your needs. Your God <clears throat> looks out for your wants and your desires. Your God would never have you homeless. Your God would never have you uneducated. Your God would never have you without health care. These sufferings are the signs and results of a fake God. The God that we follow in America, the God that we follow around the world is fake. That's why we got this pain and suffering. That's why we got all that lying and cheating. That's why we got all the war. America is dealing with a fake God. Now, you've heard it said that Trump is above the law. You ask yourself, when you listen, when people go back now and pull up 
and uncover the, the book and tell the story of your trunk, you find out that Trump has been a crook all of his life. And being a crook all of his life, his lying, his cheating, and all the stuff, his scamming, got him right to the White House. Got him in the White House. How is it that the American people, the American people were so scammed by the, one of the biggest crooks, I didn't say the biggest, but one of the biggest crooks in this country from a baby to right now. Scam the American people. All of the American people lies and cheating. Oh, man. Well, let me go back. <clears throat> in uh, we're talking about above the law. You remember Russia, Russia? 2016, his whole presidency was in violation of rules. He's violated every rule since he lost the 2020 election and that coup attempt that he made. The nation is more mass evil than little evil. So it stands to reason when the voice of evil runs the show evil will get great breaks. The question is, what do you do about justice? How do you serve your God or allow your God to serve you? These are questions that must be answered. The American people are angry that the Republicans and Trump have corrupted the courts by stacking them. Well, it wasn't just the Republicans and Trump. But nevertheless, the courts are stacked. And when it becomes political, there is no different than a white man that's called a slave master and black people being called slaves. When the system of government is designed in such a way that it works for some and not for others, it's the same as a white man, as a slave. And those that lose are black people. Slaves. The when people running the system are slave masters. And I'm not talking about people you put in power because they have already sold out to people who got money. So when I tell you that this is a hell we're living in, I'm not playing. I'm not playing with you at all. Check it out. Israel, trying to tell the world that it's one of God's best people, chosen people. And what is it doing? Serving the devil. And I know people don't want to hear me say I don't care. I'm telling you what is in my heart. What I see is they are serving the devil. Today they said they murdered or killed over a hundred people in a spot where in Gaza where they had assembled to receive aid. Now you know that the devil. <clears throat> we gonna get you. We gonna get you. And then they're teaching their people, the Israeli people, that this is God. This is God. It is God. The fake God. No, a fake God would not be out there killing people. You're talking about a two-state solution? You're talking about two homes? Hey, baby, what are you talking about? Let me tell you something else. Let me jump back to another story since I said that. This border problem. Listen to me about this border problem. You got Trump? The, one of the most evil men on the face of it, so you can bet your last money when it comes down to the people at the border. <laughs> He's going to do the most evil thing that he can come up with. That's mass evil. And Biden is going to try to do something a little less evil, but evil nonetheless. You see, people aren't dealing with the problems. I would say both of them have a little bit of right on their side, <clears throat> but no solution. To the parties that are concerned, I want you to know that a three-bedroom house can only hold so many people. A three-bedroom house can only hold so many people. A 3,000 hotel room can only hold so many. And once it gets there, it's there. So a country can only hold so many people. And just like a three-bedroom house, when it gets too many, a country, when it gets too many, is no country. It's 
a big ball or what they call that stuff when you start hoarding stuff, hoarding people. So how do you resolve the problem? The problem is not with the country they're trying to receive. It's just that the country they're trying to receive just don't understand how to deal with the problem. The problem is not. It is the people that's coming to the border and where they're coming from. They are running from their pain and suffering. That is not the solution. The solution is to fix that pain and suffering. That pain and suffering is a result of being asleep. You weren't. Your folks were and running to somebody else asking for them to just look out for you and take care of you is not the answer. The answer is you fixing your problem. You are in your location for a reason. I don't know what it is. You're there for a purpose. I don't know what it is. But I do know if you're running for your life, one of your purposes is to straighten that stuff out right there. Sure, <coughs> there are emergency situations where you have to allow people to come in. You don't have to. But you can choose to allow people to come in whatever your uh, decision is about emergency situations. But these healthy tail men running someplace, talking about, I'm tired of this, I want to go ahead and take their job or get in the way just to be in the mix. You really don't have anything to offer. You don't even bring anything to offer because they don't require anything of you. Come in and get a job. And how good is that? Look at the people here who have no job. Same point I'm trying to say is this country got to fix itself first before we can even talk about fixing someone else, but they can give you the, the proper message. These men coming here talking about give me asylum or give me, I, I'm running, my country's no good. Look here, when they're coming here like that, put them on the bus, send them back home. What did you send them back home for? To face their government. They allowed that stuff to happen. You allowed that stuff to happen. When you come in this country right here, the same thing that you allowed to happen in your country, you will allow that stuff to happen right here. In other words, you allow people to mess over you, to abuse you in your country. And you'll come right over here, and when that abuse start come, you sit around and do the same thing you did at home. You're not going to help situations out. So what you should do is go back home. You need a little help to send you back home. And when you go back home, Every country will observe you, and if you are serious about fixing your problem, then the countries that are observing you will assist you, aid you in fixing your problems to the same degree that you're committed to it. But you got to be first committed. If you're committed, say you're not going to take it no more, then people will stand by you and say, we are not going to take it anymore, and we'll get rid of these old corrupt governments. But in order to really be able to do that, we got to be coming from a point of power, which means we've gotten rid of our corrupt government. So I'm saying to the people of the world that's listening to me today, I said a bunch of stuff, and I hope you're able to disciple some good stuff out of it. I want to thank you so very much for giving me this your time. Yes, <clears throat> that border problem is a major problem. Republicans got no solution. Democrats got no solution. Oh, they got a, a response. Neither one of them is a solution. So ladies and gentlemen, I want you to know that... Uh, when it comes down to our government system, we got a mass government. And what is the mass government? Mass government is a government that stands up on lying, cheating, stealing, killing, terror, war, or hatred, racism, bigotry, all the ugly stuff, poverty, crime and violence. What is the little government? Little government is the government that stands for those same things, but not as much of it as the big and mass government. And today, mass government, evil, the most evil in this country is the Republican today. Democrats just a little bit behind, that's all. Just a little bit behind. So when you vote for Trump and Republican, you just trying to stick a knife in them and then the rest of the people deeper. And when you vote for the Democrat, you just trying to hold up, don't hurt them so bad. You hurt them, but don't hurt them so bad. That's the only thing you, that's the only difference that you're making. And you got the power to straighten it up, but you can't straighten up what you don't know. And <clears throat> for some strange reason, just think about the thing that Trump represents. When you didn't have the need to know, you didn't know. Now you got the need to know and they're telling you. But having uh, served <coughs> you as president, you know him. So when they come back and show him, you say, well, well, that ties right up with what he's done. But when did they tell you about what he's done? When are they telling you about the life that you can live, the peace and prosperity, the freedom and joy that you can have in life suffering for nothing? 
needs, wants, and desires met. Living your dreams. When and how, why won't they tell you these things? Goodbye.